They didn't even try to skirt the fair use boundaries with this one. Choose from such famous early 90s F1 manufacturers as Ferrari, McLaren or Benotton. Seriously, even the logos look almost the same. And take to the track. Satoru Nakajima was the darling of the Japanese motorsport scene of the late 80s, being the first full-time Japanese F1 driver, managing to score points. This was harder than it sounds back when only the top six placed did so, and even got a fastest lap in 1989. During his five-season Formula One career, he partnered Ayrton Senna and Nelson Piquet, some illustrious company there. Once you've picked your genuine fake team to drive for, you're put into the race season starting at Phoenix, USA. You get plenty of customization options, tire settings, suspension, angle of your wing, higher angle is slower acceleration but more downforce leading to better handling, automatic or manual transmission, and they do seem to have a little influence on the drive of your car. You'll need to qualify on each track first, which involves you driving two laps around the course on your own and trying to get a time in the top six, as only six competitors make it to the race. This is strangely easy, you can crash several times and still qualify first. This difficulty level is drastically flipped when you get to the race, however. You cannot crash but once, because if you do, you're at the back of the field with virtually no chance of catching up. To be honest, unless you're racing at the fastest possible speed, you'll never be higher than about third anyway. The front couple of guys are basically robots who race a flawless race, and you really stand no chance. The difficulty is compounded with the complete absence of any kind of navigation. There's no course map to tell you what corners are coming up, and the brief flashes of any arrows always appear too late and for too short a time to do anything about it. With no real draw distance, nor notable scenery, or anything to delineate where you are on the track, memorization is going to be tricky. The course at any one point looks the same as anywhere else. And it's a real shame because the rest of the product is quite impressive. The view is lighter or darker depending on the weather, with visible raindrops bringing more precarious handling. There's no flicker or slowdown, even with several cars on screen. The lower third has wing mirrors that actually work, a really smooth speedometer, and a list of trouble parts that show you if a part of your machinery is struggling. The controls are decent enough, with three gradations of steering in either direction, meaning you need to judge the tightness of the corners as well as your speed. No engine noise over the music, but you do get brake squeals and clunks when changing gear. Should have been an option to turn the music off though. This is not a racing sim for the casual player. It's nowhere near as accessible as F1 Race or Racing Damashi. No, it's really tricky. I'm not saying you can't get used to it. I'm certain once you figure out the difficulty and maybe learn the tracks somewhat, you could get much more enjoyment out of this than I did. I'm impressed by the presentation, but these sorts of games are so easy to get wrong, it doesn't take much. It could have been massively rectified just by flashing those arrows up like two seconds earlier than they do. Such a simple fix would have made an entire world of difference. You know what? Satoru Nakajima lent his name to another racing game the very next year. 1992 saw the release of The Graded Driver. You might have heard of it by another name. In 1993, it was released as F1 Pole Position elsewhere in the world. Perhaps that one might be better.
Thanks so much for watching this video. The Kickstarter for the book is now live. Check the link in the description for how you can back the project and be the first to get your hands on the Portable Power Encyclopedia, featuring more than 900 Game Boy game reviews and a whole wealth of useful information on the world's favorite handheld console. See you later on.